Welcome back to Wisconsin Metal Parts continuing education series on metal stamping dies. Today we're going to talk about a compound stamping die. This is a little different than the progressive dies that we've been discussing. Typically it's a much simpler die for simpler parts where we would pierce some holes and blank out the outside. Typically you're going to also have flat parts being done in a tool like this. So as the material gets fed through this is going to happen in one hit. The holes will be pierced and the outside blanked out in one shot. Most of the time you're looking at lesser tooling costs because of the way this die is constructed, but there's also some drawbacks compared to what you could do in a progressive die. Now could you make this part in a progressive die? Absolutely. We could come through here and we could have all our different punches doing our different things you would probably end up with a tool about this long in order to get this through all the progressions. In this case, we've got the top half of the die that's going to come down and it's going to pierce holes in the part and then we've got a solid punch on the bottom that is going to go up into the upper die block and be able to do the blank of this part. Some of the drawbacks of doing this is you're going to be running a little bit slower on a die like this than you probably would in a progressive die. And you're also going to end up having a loose part that's going to have to get ejected out of the top of this die. You somehow have to get out of the tool. So in this case, we came up with a, a lever that reaches in, grabs the part, pulls it back out. We don't want to have an operator reaching into the die for safety reasons, nor do we want to have any kind of tools reaching in there from an operator. So that's something that we came up with to reach in that's all tied into the press stroke to pull the parts out of there. Other things that come into play here, again, I, I mentioned it must be a simpler part. If we were to have this running in a progressive die, and let's say we pierced our holes, we move one more station down and we blank this part through and it fell out the bottom of the die, we'd probably run into some flatness issues. So in this case, the customer wanted to, to hold tolerances between these holes in relation to each other and also the hole pattern to the outside and wanted to maintain flatness. So that's why we went with a compound die in this situation. Another drawback to this type of tool is if there's any engineering changes. So typically you've got one punch on the lower half and you've got one die block on the top and in this case we've got some round punches that are located in there. If there's any geometry changes, most likely you're going to end up replacing all of the components in this tool in order to do that. If we were in a progressive die, as you've seen in some of our previous videos, there might be inserts or cutting inserts that can be changed and maybe not having to redo the whole die in that case. So this particular compound die is something we've been running here for many years. It's an older tool, but it's just it's good for a demonstration. If you picture material being fed in here off the coil, it's going to move up. If you recall in some past videos we talked about having pilots and things like that in a progressive die. We're not using pilots in this tool. This is just the feeder advancing the part about two and a half inches or so every time the press comes down and hits. So when it comes down, there's a part that's going to be blanked out. There's also going to be some scrap choppers here that cut this off so that we can get rid of the scrap more easily. This plate here is just a stripper so that it's spring loaded. So it's going to go down at the bottom of the stroke. And when this comes back up, we need to be able to pull this strip off of this punch down here. So that's what the purpose of this spring loaded stripper is going to be. So the material is going to feed in. This part will do its hit. Next one comes up, comes down, hits the part, scrap gets chopped off. The top half of our tool has the round punches, so those are going to come down just like in a conventional die, and they're going to pierce and push the slugs out of the bottom. But because this is a compound die, this right here is an actual punch itself, and it's solid, and that's going, as this stripper plate goes down, this is going to go up into our top half die block and that is ultimately what is going to punch out the outside shape of this part. 
So now we come over to the top half of the die, and this is sitting open like a book right now. Normally this would be on top of the, of the bottom half of the die. And you can see our punches that are going to pierce these holes and push the slugs down through on that bottom half. And then we have an ejector right here. This is a solid die block. So that solid punch on the bottom is actually going to pierce this up into this die block. And then when we are at the top of the stroke, inside the press, there's going to be a mechanism that is going to kick this tool and kick the part out of the die with that ejector. And then we've got our mechanical arm that comes in, reaches in, grabs the part, pulls the part out of the die. Again, talking about compound dies, ejecting the part is one of the biggest challenges of doing a die this way. You gotta be able to get in there, get the part out in order to keep the tool safe, keep the part safe and the operator. So if you appreciate the content that we're sharing, like us, share us, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. If you'd like more educational resources, go to our website at wisconsinmetalparts.com and we've got more content there talking about tooling and manufacturing in general. And remember, at Wisconsin Metal Parts, we're here to help you get your metal into shape.